Barbie of all trades? Oh, I've got to do this. <laughs> Let's dive in. Oops. <laughs> yeah, we're making a Rubo style frame saw Barbie size. Uh, this means it'll be a four foot frame saw scaled down to, what is that, like eight inches ish, something like that? Six inches. Oh, I just saw that because I'm using a ruler. <laughs> and, and this is going to be a lot of fun. So I, I was looking for a piece of steel that was about the right size, and I found this ruler. Uh, no, it is not good tool steel for this, but it will do okay. Unfortunately, it is a ruler, so I need to sharpen it. <laughs> so that means I have to set teeth. Thankfully, there is a mark on this every 16th of an inch. So I'm doing a 16 PPI saw, which in scale I think comes out to like 6 PPI, which is a little bit smaller than it should be, but yeah, it's a scale saw. It's a toy, isn't it? So I'm just actually using this diamond file, uh, excuse me, triangular file, and I'm putting it right on that 16th inch mark and cutting it in. Uh, this is a, a fairly tedious process, but you want to be careful of it. I'm going to cut them all down and just mark them and then come back and file the teeth. Now I need a retaining pin to go through the saw and then hold it into the, the, the metal frame on either end. So I'm actually just using a paper clip, which ended up being just about the right size. Just bent it over and then cut it off. Now I need two holes in the saw plate for this pin to go down through. And thankfully, because it is a very mild, mild steel, it drills through rather nicely. Hey, look at that. We're going to drill two holes through this spaced to match the, the U-pin that we just made. You can see how this then slides in there. Now we need to make the frame that this will lock onto. And for that, I have some 3 quarter inch electrical conduit. Uh, I was originally planning on using a piece of brass tubing, but the piece I had on hand was a bit too small and it just wasn't working out. Uh, so I ended up switching over to the electrical conduit. Uh, and I really kind of like that because it allowed me to paint it uh, later on, which you'll see. So we're going to uh, cut it to length and then file it down. I cut it to be twice the length that it needed to be because I'm going to get both of the rings out of this. I made a space around there that was about the same size as the frame it's going to be going onto. But after trying to clamp it in and pound it down in place, I actually found that if I drove, drove in a bunch of washers and ran them all the way through this, they gave me the rectangular shape. So I drove them in a little ways and pounded from the end and drove them in a little ways farther and pounded from the end. It took a little while, but I got a fairly nice rectangular shape uh, the way I wanted it. And now we need to clean it out because that left a lot of burrs and misshapen. And so I ended up um, kind of going through and, and hitting all the edges and making sure it, it really came out. So now I want to cut this in half so that I can get both of the hardware pieces from either end. And holding this in place was just a pain and a half. It took all sorts of jury rigging to get it to come together, but I finally found it with a bench hook. I could clamp it down and there we go. We have two pieces now. And as with any saw work, we're going to need to do a copious amount of filing. We want to get rid of all the burrs and smooth them out. I am going to be painting these, but I ended up going over them with a finer and finer file to clean them up and get them nice and smooth. Now I need to also cut into the end of either of these just a little ways, just about an eighth inch down. And this will give me enough space for the saw plate to fit down into. And this will allow that pin to then go through there and that holds the saw in place. The last thing I need to do on the hardware is drill through the end of this so that I can have the tightening bolt that goes through it. On my saw there's a big eye bolt, but I couldn't find an eye bolt that was small enough for this. So I'm going to end up using a brass screw and you can see that brass nut right there. That nut will actually go inside of this and then there's the brass screw I'm going to use. It's long right now and I will cut it down later, but I want to leave it long because I don't know exactly how long it will be. Now we have all of the hardware made for this. Let's get on to working with the wood. I'm going to be using oak. What else would I use? <laughs> but we need to cut this down to thickness. And uh, I, I tried to scale exactly what I had. But unfortunately, when you scale it down that small, the, the sticks were just were not strong enough. It was, it was little more than toothpicks. And uh, that just will not do. So we're going to make this a little bit beefier than actual scale, but I want the saw to be functional. So it's around a quarter inch thick. So we're going to resaw this down the middle. This will give us two slabs on either side that are about a quarter inch thick. 
Once we have that resawn down, we can bring in our smoothing plane and clean them off because we're going to have lots of saw kerf marks from this. But with these two pieces, we have more than enough material to make it down. I think I only ended up using one of the two pieces, but I wanted to have another one there just in case something went wrong. So I resawed down a certain amount and then cut it off so I have these two here. Now we can clamp this up in the vise and then plane it down. Hit it where it's high and then back up and hit the whole thing to get it down. And so I want to take this to a thickness that fits into the, the frame hardware that I made. And so we can test it on all four corners, then take it back, trim it down to where it needs to be, and then bring it back and test it until it just slides in on all four corners. Now this is the right, right thickness for this. The first pieces that I want to make are the two end pieces. They're shorter, but they are bigger and stockier. So I'm going to mark in exactly how tall I want them, how thick I want them, how, how wide I want them to be. <laughs> and then we can rip down to that mark and we'll end up with uh, two of these pieces that will go on either end of the frame saw. Now they are big and blocky and I don't want that, so we're gonna end up shaping them. But I want the two of them to be the exact same shape so you can clamp them up together and then plane them down to the same thickness. Once they're planed down, then we can start working on the ends of them. And this is where we're gonna have some detail. And on this one, I wanted to do the, the historical standard uh, knob that goes on either end. Um, on my frame saw, I actually have saw handles on, on one end of it, which I find to be far more comfortable but not everyone likes that. So we're gonna find the center of this and then mark off either side because I want to have a swoop coming out of it. Um, swoop, I don't know what the technical term is for this, but I wanna actually remove some of the material because it's really thick and it just doesn't need to be quite that thick. So I'm going to carve in a curl on this end and then chop out everything down to that thickness. And then we can come back and carve it in and scrape it out and we get a nice clean shape for the front edge of these. I just kind of like that. Next thing we're going to do is round off the ends because we want to create the knob on there. And at this point, I'm realizing that chisel just isn't sharp. Let's go back and sharpen it. That's a little better. So we can round it off mostly with the chisel, and then we can come back in with the file and really get ourselves a nice, clean, rounded end. Now, in order to make this more of a knob on the end, I'm going to use my triangular file to cut in a little ways, and this will then create that standard curl you're looking for. I'm going to come back in later and uh, ease off all of the corners and make them a little bit cleaner. Uh, but we want to do this on both ends and keeping them locked together, make sure we have the exact same shape on both of them. And uh, after that, we now have the basic shape. I'm going to be doing some more carving on there. But we want to make the two beams that go in between these. But I need to find, figure out, okay, how long do these two beams need to be? And I was going back and forth and what, whatnot, and I figured, let's just actually put it together and measure this. So I put the calipers on there and found, oh, they need to be this long. And so I made them a little longer than that so that we can create the tenons that go on either end. Yes, we're going to be putting tenons into this and then mortises into those, uh, those two end pieces. And then we can rip this in. Whenever working with small pieces, um, clamp it in the, the bench like this and then hold it in place. That way it's not bouncing around a lot. And it goes pretty well. Also, if you have a, uh, a saw we can go all the way through, then you can just clamp it off the side. And I really like doing this with the Japanese saws. It's a little slower, but it works really well. Now we've got our sticks. We can smooth them out and make them, uh, they ended up actually being square. So about quarter inch by about quarter inch. And I want to create the tenons that go on either end. So I'm scoring off the shoulder, and then we're going to cut in with the dovetail saw because these are so small and detailed. We're going to come into the chisel and char back to that edge. And there we have our little tenons. So we can set it on one side and then mark the exact length of what these need to be, then come back and cut the tenon on the other side. Pop, happiness. It looks like I'm taking off a large amount, but I'm really taking off like a less than a sixteenth and it's a tiny, tiny amount. So on the, the other ends of the two end pieces, we need to create the mortise. And cutting a sixteenth inch wide mortise is a lot more difficult than it sounds. You're just, you're taking off very little pieces. And so I ended up having to uh, put it in the vise so that I could chop out and then pair out both sides. It took a, a good bit more work than I expected to get a nice clean mortise coming down the sides. But eventually we did, and we made sure that all four corners then fit nicely, and uh, we've got ourselves a frame for the frame saw.
Yay! But if this is wood by right, I'm not going to stop there. We need to put a lot more detail in this. We need to do a lot of easing of the corners and uh, maybe a bit of carving. Yeah, let's do that. Oh yeah, before we get to that, I actually need to create a stop plate. Uh, this will go in the end that gets the tensioning bolt. And so it's actually a plate that that tensioning bolt pushes against so that it doesn't push into the wood and wear it out. So I got it in there and made sure it fit. Then put a little bit of CA glue on there and locked it down in. And it's just a, a small piece of, uh, of steel that I had lying around. I think it was actually left over from the, the ruler that I cut to make the, the blade. Now we can put this together and make sure it all works before we do all the carving. And this was actually a bit of a chore to put this together. It, it took um, more than I was expecting. <laughs> I had I put it together and I figured I could get the saw in there and I just couldn't get that in there and then the pins. And so I had to take it all apart, put the pins in with the saw and then put the frame together with it. But that's about it. Uh, you can see how the bolt sticking out the other end is very long. I'm actually going to go back and cut that now that I know exactly how long it needs to be. But yes, we can resaw lumber with this, and I uh, cut down a good bit with oak. Now, before we go on, let's do all the little details to make this thing uh, precious and uh, pretty looking. We're going to uh, get the hardware painted blue because this is a wood by right shop. And now we're going to be carving some C curls into the ends of this. Uh, it's a very similar format to what I have on mine. But in this case, I'm carving curls that are like less than a sixteenth of an inch. It's just a tiny, tiny little bit here. And I'm using a, uh, a file V-tool here and being very, very careful and taking my time. Then we can come in with a carving knife and ease all the corners, round them off, get them nice and smooth, card scraper everything down, and make sure that it is all final and ready to go. Uh, we're also going to be chamfering the edges of the two beams. And to do that, I actually will lock a block plane into the bench and then it very, very carefully run that over there, making sure not to roll it and, and chop my finger off. Now it's time for the BLO because this is white oak and I need BLO and we can just dip it in there and ooh, it's pretty, I'm happy. <laughs> yes, uh, let that sit in there, let it soak up as much as my wants and then wipe it off add some paste wax, wipe that off, and we are good to go. And uh, yeah, you can see how the carving came out. That is what I'm looking for. Now let's put this all together, try it out, and see what we get. Yay, it's a little frame saw, so cute. <laughs> I, this is one of the, this, this made me so, so happy, and I'm glad it came together. And yes, it does work. So I think that this would be the fifth frame saw that I've made. Um, kind of fun and something that I've, uh, yeah, this is, this is different and exciting. And I kind of like the idea of making some miniature tools. So I might be doing some more of this. But if you don't know, um, Barbie of All Trades is an Instagram page. Uh, and he is from Finland. He actually creates an entire scene set up with Barbie and has a full shop with Rubo frame saw and chisels and saws and hauling yards. But one thing that, that Barbie doesn't have it's a frame saw. So I thought this would be kind of fun. Um, so definitely take a look at the Instagram page. It is really, really cool. And this was an interesting opportunity to try something a little bit different and, and to possibly expand my experiences and uh, skills in a little bit different way. And I kind of like the idea of making miniatures. This was, uh, this was kind of fun. I might be doing something more like this in the future. I tried to make this match uh, my frame saw kit. And this is actually one from Blackburn Toolworks. Uh, this is the 36 inch version. And I wanted to make this into the 48 inch um, well, 48 inch scale version, um, fit for Barbie. So yeah, kind of <laughs> liking this. So I hope you like this little bit of craziness, a little bit different, a little bit fun. And uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what Barbie makes with this because yes, she does do all sorts of woodworking in her scale shop, making scale dovetails and things like that with scale tools. So uh, definitely take a look at that. It's kind of fun to watch and keep up with. If you would like to see other miniature tool builds, let me know that. Maybe I'll do something different, like a plane or something of that nature. Be kind of a, a fun way to expand uh, experiences and try something a little bit different. So thanks for watching. I'd love to hear your thoughts and ideas. What did you like about this? What didn't you like? What did I? What can I do better? What uh, can I learn from this? I'd love to hear that because I do learn a lot from that. Also, I want to say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon, everyone who is supporting this channel as a member here or on Patreon. You are the ones keeping this channel going, and a huge thank you for that. It means more than I can possibly say. Without patrons on Patreon, this channel would not be here, so thank you for that. On that note, I think that's about it for today, and until next time, have a wonderful day. Okay, I'm about to die, but I have to do it. 
This thing's small enough that even Sarah could use it. <laughs>